Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss lit code patient 787 that says cheapest flights within K stops. So here we are given N cities and a flights array um, where each uh, index represents the flight from city I to city I with a price. Uh, so yeah, and you can make K stops in between starting from source to destination. So you are given one source uh, node and one destination node and you need to move from source to destination and in between you can take at, at most k stops so we need to return the cheapest price to move from source to destination with at most k stops and if no route is there from source to destination then return minus one so yes take a look at this first example so we have this uh, graph uh, this graph of the flights and it is a detected graph as you can see because the flight is only from one uh, from to one city that is two okay so yes uh, here our source is zero that is the uh, this node and destination is this node and k is one so with the k is one there is only one path that is from zero to one to three with one uh, that is k stop that is one stop okay at a, at a node one so that is only one stop so that's why we can uh, see here the only path here is this and the total cost is 600 plus 100 that is 700 so but what if if you have k uh, more than one let's say if k we had it we had two then we can take better path like zero to one one to two and two to three because the cost of this path is 200 plus 100 plus 100 that is 400 so that's why if we would uh, we could have take two uh, two stops then we would have choose for this one got it now let's take a look at this example so here we have source as zero destination as two and k is one source is 0 and destination is 2 okay so here one path is 0 to 2 directly with a cost 500 with 0 stops in between and another is 0 to 1 1 to 2 with 1 stop in between and this is a uh, cheaper so we took this path got it with uh, so 100 plus 100 that's 200 that's our answer and uh, in the same case if you would have k equal to 0 then the only path option we have we have available is directly from 0 to 2 so we return 500 okay so now more intuitively instead of looking this as a flight side take this as a graph that is a directed weighted graph so instead of taking a flight array uh, think it uh, like a directed weighted graph where we are given one source node one destination node we need to move from source to destination and it, in between we can uh, take only k intermediary nodes got it so yes one possible way of you might be thinking is uh, we can do a bfs traversal right simple bfs traversal explore all the no possible nodes calculate the distance uh, you, and store the minimum distance in this distance array and uh, return the distance of the destination right yeah this is one possible way by doing a bfs traversal on, on the all other nodes maintaining one distance array and if we found uh, means a better distance then we will update the distance for the ith node and in the end we will return the distance for this destination node got it but what will happen in the bfs let me show you so here this is source this is destination and this is the graph this is the directed weighted graph given okay now if you have travel if you are doing bfs then bfs will um, travel all the edges yeah so in order to move to till 4, it will check for this edge 0 to 1 and 1 to 4, correct? Then it will also check for this edge 0 to 2, 2 to 4 and also this edge 0 to 4. So if you will try to check all the edges uh, by doing a simple BFS traversal, huh? then this uh, then the current test cases are so high that that will give you time limit exceeded. Okay, so simple BFS won't work here. We need to think something else. See what we are doing here we are uh, we have one source node we have to move to destination node uh, and we have directed weighted graph so think of an algorithm that we can uh, use to solve this question think that there is one specific algorithm that is dedicated to directed weighted graph and uh, to find the cost or the distance from source to destination in the directed weighted graph and that algorithm is Dijkstra's Dijkstra's algorithm. So in Dijkstra's algorithm, 
uh, we, uh, it is uh, almost similar that we have source node, destination node. We have tried to move from source to destination by selecting the minimum cost path at each uh, at each node, and that's how we travel. And the only twist we have to here in this distress is to maintain uh, k stops, to maintain number of stops. Okay, that's the only thing we have to uh, maintain here in the distress algorithm. So in the distress algorithm, we what we are doing, we are using one heap, right? Uh, that is a mean heap. So as you can see here, uh, what our mean heap will try to do here at we at the node zero, it will try to check all the adjacent nodes, and the mean heap, the topmost element, will store the node with the minimum cost. So here it will store this node, uh, means this edge from zero to two because it has the minimum cost, correct? So yes, it will store this node. So uh, let's say our cost is two, and uh, we will traverse this two. Now this is again in our queue. This is a priority queue that is mean heap, right? Then again for this node, it will check for all the um, possible path with the minimum edge. So the minimum edge, minimum cost edge is three. So we will add this three, and once we reach our destination, we will simply return. We would. It means if uh, if the node is a destination, we would simply stop. But you might be thinking, why we need to stop? Do we need to check for other path also? No, we won't check for other path whenever we reach our destination first because we are using distress algorithm. So the first time only we are visiting the node, uh, that would be the best possible path because here we are using the mean here, the minimum cost here, right? Uh, so that's how we will use distress algorithm. So yeah, we covered the uh, why we won't use VFS and why we need to use this mean heap. The mean heap, uh, so distress is simply what? It is simply BFS plus uh, mean heap, right? It is simply an optimization of BFS. So that's how a distress algorithm will work. And we are talking about the time and space complexity. We will discuss that at the end of the video. So now let's move on to the coding part where we will see how we will code this question. So let me move here. Okay, so initially let me take one uh, graph variable. Okay, I will also require one pair to store the cost. Let me name it as G. And that would be of size N. Now we will traverse for all the flights. Flights of size I plus plus and uh, for all the flight we will store of starting uh, that is that is from is this flights of zero dot push what we would do we would simply push the ending that is the from source to destination and along with the price I of zero one Okay, yes, it is from to an end price. The price is at the last index. In here, it would be also I. So, this is our graph ready. Now, let me take one priority queue. Q. Uh, and I will take one tuple. And this is a uh, minimum here. Uh, so, this is how. Uh, we write the syntax and greater of that tuple and let me name it as pq for the priority q we will also maintain one total number of steps in this vector number of steps uh, and it would be size of n and we would initialize all the steps as zero Uh, so instead of zero, we will initialize it at int max. So in the future, we can use the minimum uh, function here, right? And what else? Yeah. Now we will store the source in this pq dot push. See, we are uh, applying the priority queue uh, on the cost. So in order to uh, in order to sort the elements on the basis of the cost, we will first push the cost 
So cost, cost from source to source is zero. And yeah, then we will push the source element and then the number of stops. So this is the structure of the priority queue. Uh, cost, then node, then stops uh, to reach that node. Got it? Now we will try to do the standard BFS. Until this queue is empty. So let me take it as if this auto cost node and stops equal to pq dot first and we would push uh, sorry pop, pop that element from the queue now we would check uh, if uh, stops okay if number of stops it will be stops up till this node if it is less than this stops okay or or for the instead or of the stops is greater than k then i would continue so what does this means that if we have any node whose number of stops is less than stops that means uh, we would have previously arrived at very at a better edge so here let's say we initially are at two and then we arrived at four uh, for our time being understand that uh, this just take uh, take that four is not our destination node, and that is one another destination node like five and let's say six. Six is our destination, right? So initially, so with this route zero to two, two to four, we reach four. Now our queue will also have this one, right? Because all the edges of zero are stored. So uh, and from one we reach four, correct? But here by on reaching four, what we found that the number of uh, that we have already reached four with a uh, with a less number of stops so uh, just take it like this so here one another node x is there and then it is four is there four is there so here the number of stops are two here the number of stops is one so here there is less stop correct the next thing here is this we took uh, we took uh, this uh, this path why because this is a better path so so if while using this mean hip what we are doing we are trying to take the better path at the first time so if we have visited any node at first then that might be the best path. So uh, if and also if the number of stops stops is less than this, then we won't check. So we would continue. So we won't do anything ahead. Got it? Now the next thing is if the node equals to destination DST, then we would simply return the cost. Okay, this cost. Why? Because we are using, as I told you earlier that we are using priority queue. So if we uh, whenever we reach at any node, then that then that is the best possible path with which we can reach the node. So that's why we just return cost here. We won't check for any other no nodes because here we are using a priority queue where uh, the distance is sorted based on the cost. Okay. Now yeah, for all uh, adjacent node uh, from this current node, we would traverse and we would push it to this queue. Uh, so yeah, pq dot push. What it would be first, we would have to push cost plus adjacent of two. Uh, that is the pr uh, price. Then uh, adjacent of one. So that is that node uh, and the number of stops. So initially the this stop. So we would push stop plus one. Right. Okay. And in the end, what we would do, we would simply return minus one. Why minus one? Because we have we haven't found any node that is equal to DSA, that is the destination node. So in the end, we would simply return minus one. Okay, now let us try to run this. Okay, it would be not first, it would be top here. And yeah, one thing I also noticed here is that this would be index one and this would be index zero. So this is index zero and this is index one. Okay. Now let us try to run this again. What is there intent? Okay, okay, so this is a pair. So instead of this dot first, uh, so this will like uh, this would be the second. Okay, and this would be adjacent dot first. It is giving some wrong. So here, let us try to debug this. Okay, one thing we forgot here is number of stops 
because we have also need to initialize this number of stops as stops okay to reach the node the, this number of stops are required so yes okay so one thing also i i want to uh, mention here is if the uh, same for a destination node uh, destination what would be that would be uh, k plus uh, one stop right why because uh, there are intermediary k stops k stops in between so this destination would be k plus one right so instead of checking this condition here we would check it after this that if stops is greater than k then we would continue we can't add any more stops here so we would continue right so yeah now all the disk cases are passed now let us try to submit this okay so yes our code got accepted uh, so I hope you guys understood the intuition as well as approach to this question uh, now talking about the time complexity so the time complexity would be see for this it would be the big of n and for this so for this priority queue so as you know the priority queue is n log n but uh, thinking of n here what would be the n so the n would be the the, uh, the number of nodes that you took in this priority queue multiplied by k but if, because we are taking a k stops so how many to, so the total number of edges here are is let's say uh, the size of the flex let's say let's take it as e and the total number of stops is k so e into k log e into k plus big o of m so that is the time complexity and the space complexity is also almost the same so let me write it here the time complexity would be big o of n plus e k log e k and the space complexity would be big of n plus e into k because this many number of nodes we will we would be storing in that max um, in that mean heap sorry so that's why this is the time complexity and space complexity for this problem so yeah that's all for this video make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel and also currently also posting the opportunities of the job job market mostly related to software engineering so make sure you check that in the community section as well so yeah that's all from my side today um, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you